June. A cold snap in June. Imagine that. <sighs> I wonder what poor sacrificial lamb someone must be leading up the mountain right this second in the hopes of getting someone greater than all of this on the horn for them. Did that happen often, dear shepherd? Were you ever faced with the knowledge that you were raising blank-eyed, obedient little things, as sweet and slow as honey, only to know that they were born to die for almost nothing, for the sustenance of hope in favor of any physical needs? Of course, I've never been that spiritual. Even back when I was simply the offhand spare, I think that's why the mother Mina disliked me so. Nothing more than a tall child in a damnable adult body, inevitably doomed in their eyes. Yet I can't seem to feel the flames that lick me everywhere I go. If only getting on their good side was as easy as going to chapel every week like it was when I was younger. Maybe I would have spent less time trying to get out of it then. No, I take that back. I think I still would have done everything I could to shirk their holy noose. You know what they say, freedom is a length of rope and God wants you to hang yourself with it. And I'm standing on a chair. Forgive me, I don't even know why I'm still talking. I guess the leather can make me a tad contemplative at times. I do worry, though. Snow this early in the year with the crops still on their seasonal rotations. A cold snap could. I, I could conceivably be spending my second year as queen ruling during the famine, and if they don't already despise me when the times are easy, if I give them a reason to hate me, a true, honest-to-God reason, it's... It's an unenviable position, to say the least. But I tell you this sort of thing rather often, don't I? I stand here in half a dozen fineries, silk gloves atop recently hardened flesh, and I, I tell you how hard it is to be me. Just how hard it is to go to dances and eat fancy food and talk to respected individuals all day, every day. Never worrying that my thatch roof is going to begin leaking or that I can't feed my hounds, let alone myself. What a burdensome life I live. What a beast I am for shouldering all of this. But I've never tried to leave it. Even during my periods of exile, I traveled the country and saw its wonders, and yet... I always had plans of returning home once more to challenge the throne that I was never supposed to get and therefore never even tried to want. Even when I knew I could never go home, I knew all roads would lead me back. Was it a sense of righteous responsibility that coursed through me, a love of my nation that made me pursue this path? Or was I just too cowardly to imagine a normal life that just so happened to be not the normal that I once knew? Or was I just too cowardly to imagine a normal life that just so happened to not be the normal I once knew? I disgust myself. I disgust Yes, dearest. Maybe it is indeed just the weather. The cold seep resting in my bones that reminds me of all that I once was and all that I still am. Just squeeze into a crenolone in three inch heels. Sure. Maybe it's all just the weather. The snow and the sleet 
and the winds that blow with the power to rip branches from trees and warmth from the soul. The kind of weather that makes you want to lie down forever, but reminds you that to sleep is to die. And to die is to never be cold again. Fingers too numb to strike a match properly, with kindling too wet to catch a light, and winds too strong to allow fire to linger as anything more than a spark. At that point, why not just die? The flame made it look so easy, why can't I follow its example? Sure, maybe it is just the weather. Why must I remain? Why does the heart beat when the soul has long since given up? <sighs> if the mother Dahlia sees you leaning on me in such a way, I don't know who I'd send to be executed first. Her or you. I curse the fact that you know where my sympathies lie most, but just this once. I'd lay at your feet like the stupidly loyal dog I am if you asked me to, but I expect you never to ask me such a thing. That's why I feel so comfortable offering. I expect you'd never seek to rob me of my dignity. I don't have enough to be considered worth plundering to begin with. You know, there... There was a time I did actually attempt to... Die. Passively, at least. The poor would look upon me as a coward if I truly attempted anything more, but... It was during one of the darkest days of winter. A time when the sky was as black as night in the middle of the day. I was out in the snow on my hands and knees, desperately digging in one spot of frozen earth I had managed to excavate from the snow. My fingernails had been ripped off my hands and I barely, 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 barely managed to make my way past the top layer of frozen earth. But I had to keep going. The hot blood leaving my body froze in my fingers, but if I stopped digging for even a second, I would surely be no longer. As plentiful as the rabbits were when I could manage to find a den I could fit through, they were small, and it was almost more worth it to keep them alive just because their little bodies pulsed with so much heat, but my hunger almost always got the better of me at one point or another, and of course, I, I had my competition. Competition far more rewarding, but far harder to take down than a rabbit. I couldn't risk it in my emaciated state, but I needed it more than anything, and yet, there I was. Scratching away at dirt. Desperately seeing the remnants of roots in between bites of bark, I... I think at some point, it all got to me. This idea I was expending all this effort for. For what? The hopes of living another day? Another miserable winter day of savagery and sickness and starvation? For another day after that? And a day after that? It all seemed so demented I wanted to laugh, but that would require some real effort. Effort to communicate, to speak, almost. Something that I hadn't even attempted for months. And had to. Hadn't tried, but still, I tried. A dry crackle of a laugh before I fell face first into the snow. The wind carried it farther than I ever could have. I mean, not like I tried, for who would even be there to hear me? And then I went to sleep. I went to sleep with a knowledge that there'd be nothing weighing for me when I died. Nobody I loved and nobody who loved me, for I had no one no longer. It would just be me, until there was nothing. A 
then there wouldn't even be a me at all. And then I woke up, wrapped in a blanket, fingers wrapped in cloth bandages, the smell of piping hot bread coming from the oven. I don't remember much, really. I don't know how I got there, or who let me in, or even why, but I spent three days with these people. I helped with their chores, and I ate their bread when they offered it, and slept next to the fireplace when the snow seemed to retract from the earth. And when the snow seemed to retract from the earth, I... I thought it was best if I bothered those kind souls no longer, and I... I left. I wish I knew who they were, just so I could thank them properly. Or maybe even scorn them a little for keeping me alive, just because I had to soldier on afterwards, but... I tried. I tried to die. I think I was more ready for it then than I'd ever been. And I didn't. Couldn't. Wasn't allowed to. Now look at me. A knife held to my neck is nothing, but a single snowflake on my skin makes me wish I did die all those years ago. If anyone else knew. I... I suppose if... Nothing else can get truly done today with how... drafty the castle is, then... Perhaps taking the day to... Cuddle under blankets together... Wouldn't be unacceptable to me. Dear. Provided I can bring my paperwork with me, of course. I I don't need the mothers on my case for not approving the recent debt plans or trade relationships. It, it may very well be our very best chance to have a cold snaps or a famine from ravaging the land as they've eaten away at me once. I do not have to leave this land into ruin like my father did if I'm the one running the show. I can do what he never considered. What he never could. And I can love this land like... Like I love... To my chambers, dear shepherd. M may I ask you to... To hold... Nothing. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Mm-hmm. <sighs>